Hello everyone, it has been a little while, hasn't it? Um, <laughs> I I don't know what's been happening with YouTube, but I um, having a small business and a full-time job does certainly take a lot of your free time. So that is what I've been doing a lot of my free time lately. Um, I had an incident not long ago that I thought I would share with you guys. Oh, I've gone really low down, hang on. Um, that I thought I would share with you guys because um, it does affect you know a large part of my collection of plants and um, well I'm just gonna I'm not even gonna beat around the bush also if I'm really stiff today it's because I um, have cricked my neck and it's driving me a bit crazy so if I'm um, looking a bit stiff like I'm doing this rather than like the this <laughs> it's because my neck really hurts um, so not very long ago i got a little bit overexcited because as you all know or if you've been following my channel before um i now have a garden and i've had a number of cacti and succulents for a very long time and i've always known that they really need some outdoor time in order to actually um sort of reach their full potential so i got all very excited and i was like oh this is gonna be amazing i'll put them outside and um they'll grow fantastically and I thought what I need is a greenhouse so I got one of those um, PVC greenhouses from uh, well actually it was from my mum and she bought it from B&M I think and um, <laughs> I can laugh about it now I'm not gonna lie this took me some time to get over Um I set up the greenhouse and I put my cacti and succulents almost all of my collection apart from the really big old ones which I left in the window um, I put them all out into the greenhouse and I left them for 24 hours and when I got back this is what they looked like um, so as you can probably see from the photos on screen they are looking completely dead um, so they're all white, they're mushy, they've cooked, okay, so, um, <laughs> and I checked the thermometer that I'd left in the greenhouse and it turned out that they'd gone all the way up to like 54 degrees Celsius, um, so they, ooh, they did not, they did not do well and I think I've managed to rescue maybe two cuttings of a crassula and that is it um, that was uh, Crassula rupestris marinara I think it is um, and I'm sure you can understand I was pretty devastated because this is like 80-90% of my collection of cacti and succulents which many of which I have kept alive since sort of 2018 which you know is not a great deal of time for some collectors but for me that's been a long time a lot of them have seen me through um, a couple of moves and you know they're like my friends um, so that that was pretty brutal I'm not gonna lie so I took about a month um, of thinking oh, I don't I can't I, I don't even know if I want to do cacti and succulents again because I'm just so kind of heartbroken about it um, but you know that didn't last very long <laughs> um, and I had had in the calendar for quite a long time um, the British Cactus and Succulent Society shows so they were doing one show um, at Blenheim Palace in Oxfordshire um, and they were also doing a full um, a full British Cactus and Succulent Society Oxford and Hawarthia Society um, show in Oxfordshire a couple of weekends later um, so I think the Blenheim Palace one was 27th of May or something no, it was in June. I, I can't remember the dates. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. So it was the Blenheim Palace Flower Show. So they had a couple of stalls there and I was thinking, oh my goodness, now I need to, you know, I need to replenish my cactus and succulent selection, co selection, collection, because it's been such a long time now since I've really been able to go out and think about what plants I actually want to have. Because when I first started getting into my cacti and succulents, I just wanted everything. Whereas now I feel like I've got a bit more of a um, preference for what uh, cacti and succulents I really like and also that I know that I can keep alive. Um, so that was kind of the premise. Um, and that was, it was a really nice day, it was a really hot day. Um, I went with my mum and we had a great time. That was fantastic, I loved it. Um, and I did get quite a lot of cacti and succulents at that show. So. 
I, <laughs> I brought them home and then two weeks later I took myself to the Oxford show and I got quite a lot more. Um, now context because I, I do I want to share these because it's an amazing haul I want to share them but I do want to apply the context that this is replenishing a lot of my collection some of these are going to live outdoors and um, it is also my birthday this month so I was kind of like do you know what I'm going to spend some money I'm going to bring my collection back up to, up to scratch I'm going to enjoy myself and make myself feel better after my accidental cull um, so I do want to say like I feel like sometimes it's a bit like contentious to be showing off like wealth and stuff like that I want to tell you right now I think my total spent is maybe 180 pounds and now that is quite a lot um, but I think you will agree when you see what I've got that for that money um, it's actually not that bad so um, one of the best things about going to a Cactus and Succulent Society show is that these people are really passionate about their um, their hobby, their craft, um, and they often will be selling plants for a lot cheaper than what you can get in the supermarket or in the garden centre. So um, I do just want to be clear, I've not been like spending thousands here, okay? I don't have thousands to spend. Um, and I also don't have the room for probably all of the ones that I've got um, but this is it for for like quite a while now um, this is now my new collection so this is what I'll be looking after anyway waffling aside um, I think I'll start off with what I bought from the uh, Blenheim Palace flower show and then we'll go on to the uh, <laughs> the Cactus and Succulent Society show it was amazing and I highly recommend to anyone whether you're a member or you're not a member to go to these shows because they're fantastic right I'll have a quick slurp of tea and then let's get into it so um I the first stall that I came to um and now I'm going to be really bad with names so if I can remember or find out who I bought these from I will try and put the names on the screen but I'm going to show you the big you know the big boy that I got um and this was my first purchase so this is a very gorgeous Sirius Peruvianus Monstrosus uh, and also has white flowers now this was 25 pounds okay this I mean this thing is nearly as big as my head and it was 25 quid um and this is what I mean about you know this is seriously amazing stuff that they sell um, for very affordable prices I will say having had this in my life for a couple of weeks now this thing is absolutely lethal um, as soon as you brush against it or anything brushes against it you are covered in spines so this is one to be really careful of he's living outside at the moment he seems to be doing really well but yeah gorgeous one and this is one that I had for, um, well many years ago and I think I under underwatered it to death um, and mine was a lot smaller actually as well so I'm very chuffed to have that lovely one in my collection um, from the same stall I think I just got two other plants actually um, and it was these two little aeoniums now these two um, well one of them has been on my wish list for quite a while and the other one is new to me so this is the aeonium kiwi um, sorry ki kiwi sunset and it's a multi-branching aeonium and that uh, was five pounds for this little aeonium which is very very pretty um, so as it matures there'll be more and more of the, the kind of the pink that you can see around the edge here um, and that's a really really pretty aeonium so I'm really chuffed with that and the other one is uh, Eonium Bronze Medal. So I don't know if you can see on here, it's got some lovely little um, stripes on the leaflets of the lovely Eonium. So I'm excited for that one to grow up as well. So um, two lovely ones. This one was four pounds, the other one was five pounds. So um, not bad at all, to be honest, considering what you would pay for these sort of choice specimens. Um, even just on eBay, sometimes these are really, really expensive. Um, so that was a really cool stall. I was really chuffed with that. And I thought that was it. Went around the corner, found a whole other stall. And my goodness, there, were, <laughs> there was a lot of plants there. So um, I'm just going to, I'm going to have to remember exactly which ones I got um, from this other stall. I'm going to start from here so what I did get was 
this Echeveria colorata thing is. So that one's really, really pretty. I've repotted this one since because um, for me, I just prefer to use terracotta for these. Um, but I'm only sort of part way through my <laughs> repotting mission. Um, but I love this one. And what's also really nice about buying these from the, these specifically from these shows is when you go to the supermarket or the um, garden center, these will always have had their sort of their really powdery coating sort of prodded off by people because people will just be touching all the time whereas this is a really beautiful specimen um and this wasn't expensive at all i can't actually remember a lot of the prices of these um but i know this was probably about four or five pounds something like that um so that's a really gorgeous one um and these are all grown by the people who are selling them and they're really really lovely people they all know so much about these plants if you've ever got a question um, on how to keep them they will be able to tell you straight away so um it's you know for many reasons i really love this side of of the hobby so this is crassula tom thumb now this one i think is very cool he's so weird it makes me think of um a tardigrade for some reason something about the the way that this sort of succulent loops together but the it's just so cute i love it so um that one's very exciting for me i love my crassula i'm going through a huge crassula phase <laughs> at the moment um so yeah very chuffed with this very very happy and also it's very similar to one of the ones that i lost um which was a, a repestris so um so we've done the tom thumb um now this one I think was from um, the Blenheim store as well. So this was uh, Th Thelocactus heterochromus, so two colours. Um, and that's a really pretty one. And that should grow quite big actually. But what I really like about it, what's really appealing about it is this sort of pink in the centre here. I think that's really, really pretty. Um, I've not actually had a Thelocactus before. So that's a new one for me, um, which is also very exciting uh right next 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 this uh lovely crassula you may have seen from my instagram this is a crassula cornuta var minor um so this one i think is so cool he looks so weird he's feeling a bit wet because he's just been outside in the rain um but yeah i just love that i think it's so funky and he's got such lovely kind of texture to these to these leaves um, I don't know if you can tell, I'm really obsessed with Crassula at the moment. You might be able to tell. Uh, right, which next? Um, we also got, ow, ow, ow. See, this is the real danger of doing this video. Um, we've also got a Haworthia truncata, which um, I, a couple of years ago, I went to um, one of these shows and I really regretted not buying one of these at the time um, again because they're so cheap compared to I have got a spine in me compared to what you get in the suit in I keep saying supermarket in the garden center these would be quite expensive but um, I think this I bought for maybe six pounds something like that so this is one of those lovely succulents that is meant to um, sort of grow flush with the ground so that um, grazing animals in South Africa are not going to be eating um, the plants and they've got these uh, I can't I think they're called fenestrations or it doesn't something doesn't feel right about that um, but it's basically like a little window where they do all their photosynthesis from at the top so these are very cool um, so it's really tough to get that one it looks like horse teeth to me <laughs> so that's a very cool one and then we got the Haworthia venosa. Now I accidentally mistook this one for actually a different Haworthia that I've had in the past. And it turns out, I think I do still have some um, Haworthia venosa, but this one looks a lot healthier than mine. So um, I think, oh, no, I don't have it here, but um, yeah, I'm really chuffed to have this one because it's looking a lot happier and healthier. And it's got a lovely little pattern on the leaves here um so yeah sorry if my cat lucy is distracting but i thought it might be nice to have her in frame for once and she's quite antisocial. um so um now the next one that i got is this one so this is one that i lost in the i'm gonna call it the, in the great cull of the greenhouse um so this is senecio senecio crassissimus um and this one's lovely i think it's called like lavender steps or something like that 
but it's just to me this is a very very pretty plant and I just I love it um, and this is actually a lot bigger and healthier than the one that I had before so um, you know not all is lost um, and I think um, I think I might have actually bashed one of these off in the middle just during transport but that kind of happens with these sometimes they're very delicate so um, yes that was that one um, the next is this one which I couldn't quite resist because he just looks so weird and I've never come across this one before so this is a Monvillea Spegazzini um, so what I really like about him is the weird sort of colour and I just I don't even really know what he's supposed to look like I really need to look it up actually um, when he grows to a mature size but it's just he was just such an unusual one that I couldn't resist <laughs> getting this one um, so I'm gonna have a look at what it actually should look like when it's grown up and what else did we get aha onto my agaves so the first is this lovely big um, agave americana what are you aurea medio picta um, so this is a lovely big one and this will grow to be quite large and this is probably going to live outside in the garden and maybe just protect it over winter um, but this again was not very expensive and was probably something like six pounds seven pounds um, which you would just you just don't get in the greenhouses greenhouses I can, why can't I think garden center um, but anyway so I was really chuffed to get this one um, and alongside him I got let's pop him down there um, this lovely one because I've always been ogling um, agaves but I've just they're so expensive so I just haven't gone for them but this fella now isn't this one gorgeous so this one is agave uh, quadricolor. I'm not actually sure what um, the species is. Um, it's a um, hybrid of some description. So I'm not sure how big this one will grow, but I just love um, the, the variegation on the leaves. I think that's super pretty. Uh, right, and I think there's only two more that I got from that stall. Um, so I got this little, really tiny little ama, uh, ama, agave, <laughs> agave cream spike. Now this one is a replacement for one that I had before. Um, although on reflection now, I don't think it's the same um, agave that I had in the past. But basically I used to keep it indoors because we never had a garden um, and it didn't quite make it because agaves don't really like to live indoors. Um, so this I just think is really pretty. I love the kind of the blue tone of the leaves and then the creamy beautiful uh, variegation here. So um, really chuffed with that one. And I think the final one from that stall um, was a and one of these has got a death bloom, I think. Um, where are we? It's got all uh, tangled up in the mic. Um, it is a Sempervivum. Oh, it doesn't say what, semp what kind of Sempervivum it is, but it's just a Sempervivum. Uh, this can go out in the garden and um, will look really pretty. It's got a little death bloom um, and in one of these. Um, so when they bloom like this, it usually means it's the end of that particular little plant. Um, but that's okay because we've got plenty in here. Um, and there will also be sort of seeds in here if it manages to pollinate. So um, yeah, really chuffed with that one. That was really, really pretty. And actually not one that I'd naturally gravitate towards. Um, but once I picked up this one, um, I just, I don't know, something happened and then I suddenly went a bit semp of even mad. Um, so the next um, couple of plants I bought from a specific seller who was actually a bit rude. So I'm not going to say um, who the seller was because I just don't like rude people. So, um, but what I did get was a couple of really funky Sempervivum. So this is the first one. This is the one that really caught my eye. So this one is going to go in the garden. Um, I've no idea what these are, but I just, I really like them. So um, <laughs> this one I just think is really funky. So um, that one I think was five pounds. And then I think the rest were three for 15 pounds. So what I got was this one who looks like a bit like he's got dreadlocks is a bit funky again I have no idea what these are and I got this little fella who's got these sort of 
nest like little bits coming off which I think is so cool um, and I just uh, yeah really fell for this one and finally this little one um, which looks like cobwebs which I think there's some kind of um, hybrid name that includes cobwebs in the name so I think that's what this one's called um, so that was it for Blenheim Flower Show. It, um, there was quite a lot, as you can see. Um, I'm just gonna pause for a second because my leg's going to sleep. Okay, we're back. Um, I'm just gonna have a little sip of tea as well because this is thirsty work. Um, and this is where we get crazy um, in terms of the haul. <laughs> so, um, where do I begin? So that, that was my first um, really lovely experience um, at the Blenheim Flower Show. Oh my goodness, I've got spikes in my legs and I can't figure out where. I've got a spike somewhere in here in this where I've, <laughs> where I've obviously nudged that big lethal one and it's got a spine in my, um, in my cardigan and it keeps getting my leg but I can't figure out where it is. How frustrating. Um, Oh well, we'll figure it out. I don't know if you can hear by the way, it's crazy, crazy windy outside as well as sunny. It's a very strange day. Um, right. <laughs> okay, where do I begin? So, I went to the Oxford Cactus and Succulent Society and Howorthia, uh, Howorthia Society branch. Um, show and that was on the 1st of July and um, I I didn't really go with like any sort of restriction in, in the back of my mind but I did think I need to not go too crazy um, I also had a hire car long story my car got bumped into while it was in the uh, in the garage I wasn't even in the car at the time um, thankfully the insurance um, look up, looked after us all paying for the uh, replacement of the door and um, hire car and stuff I was thinking oh my god I've got to make sure that I don't get like soil and sand and dirt and all this stuff in the car and I didn't really prepare very well all I brought was a big um, plastic tub <laughs> so <laughs> that's what we're going to go through now um, so <laughs> Uh, there's only a couple actually out here that did that don't fit into that tub so I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what the heck I bought because I don't know it's crazy right so um, when I first went in there um, the first, the moment you walk through the door there's this great big stall um, full of cacti and succulents oh my goodness I think I think my greenhouse might be about to take off I don't know why it's so windy sorry um so when, when you first go in there, there's this all these tables of sales tables which is just crazy and I'm a magpie like I'm gonna be honest I am a complete magpie and as soon as I see something that I want um I find it very hard to walk away <laughs> um especially because I had this like justification internally that I was actually just trying to rec recoup some of my collection because um, my collection was in a very sad state of affairs um, and obviously I got some really lovely plants the previous weekend but it's still just a fraction of what I lost so um, <laughs> I'm gonna try and do this like almost chronologically just because uh, that way I won't miss anything um, but the very first plant that I saw is one that has been on my list for a very long time which is the Echeveria Compton Carousel um, which is a gorgeous gorgeous plant you might not be able to see it in this video very well but it has kind of like pink edging which is really really pretty um, and I have actually taken like a little um, leaf a couple of leaf cuttings actually just um, I'm just drying them out at the moment just because I really really want to have this plant um, and I'm learning by my mistakes I'm taking propagations as much as I possibly can so that I can um, at least try and maintain one <laughs> one plant in my collection so that's the plan with this one because I love this one and this one is going for all sorts of crazy prices like 42 plus pounds on eBay and stuff like that for a mature one so this I think cost me 12 pounds which is quite expensive um, but for what for what this plant is is not actually that expensive so I was just so chuffed to get a wishlist plant here um, so that was the first one that I 
bought and I had to keep going I didn't bring anything to carry stuff in so I had to keep going back and forth so I'd buy like six at a time go back to the car empty my bag and then go back and get some more I think they must have thought I was crazy um I also bought um let's have a look what else did I get from that table what I got it's oh my gosh this is crazy um I picked up um the where is it gone where did I just put that oh yeah um, this is the next little one that I grabbed because I just I couldn't resist he looks incredible and I was so excited I've never even seen this one before so this is Crassula Marchandii or Mar Marchandi I'm not quite sure but he's just so funky and weird man like I just love this plant um, and as I said Crassula is so my vibe at the moment I don't I just I just I love it. <laughs> um, so that was the next one that I think I grabbed like with vigor. <laughs> um, and I also got, sorry, I keep changing position is because my legs are going to sleep because I'm sitting on a hardwood floor. Um, I also got this one. Now I can't figure out this one. Um, this is the Crassula cotyledonus variegata. And I can't actually find any pictures of this plant online. Um, and what on earth it's meant to look like. So this is going to be very interesting um, w watching this grow up because I don't, know what he's, I don't know what he's going to grow up into like and I've just never seen anything quite like him. Um, so that's going to be a very interesting one um, which I'm excited to see what he looks like as he grows older. Um, and I did, I must admit, I did use this as an opportunity to really... Um, bulk out my crafting collection because that's what I'm obsessed with at the moment. Um, what else did I get? I got Crassula Deceptor which looks actually very similar to the... Um, where are we? Where did I just put you? The Cornuta Var Minor but he's, he is actually quite different so um, the two have like a similar kind of shape but they you know when you actually look at them they are somewhat different although I don't know now I'm thinking maybe I've got two of the same plant I, I don't mind to tell you the truth um but yeah so this is Crassula Deceptor um which I thought was quite funky um I also got so this is a replacement of one that died so this is the Haworthia viscosa um which is a really cute little one really really pretty um, I had one before that did really, really well and sadly just didn't survive that great greenhouse cull. Okay, you can't really see the lights really bad. Um, hopefully you can see that. Yeah, there you go. So that's a really nice, I just love the way that this has like, almost like a ladder kind of effect. It's really pretty. Um, so we'll see how that one does. Um, then I got, so I really did go a bit crazy on the Crassula. So this is uh, Crassula orsensis, which I've never seen before, uh, which is really pretty. Um, and I also got uh, Crassula Morgan's Beauty. Now I'll see if I can find a good picture of the flowers for this one, because the flowers are just stunning. Um, and apparently this is quite a popular plant. Um, but yeah, the, the leaves are lovely. They've got this lovely kind of rough texture. Feels a bit like a cat's tongue. It's really gorgeous. Um, continuing on with the Crassula. Actually, I'll show you this one because it is kind of similar, um, but I think it's a slightly different cultivar. So this is apparently Crassula Coralita C. Susanna crossed with C. Falcata. So I don't really know what to expect from this one, but I think he's kind of cute. Um, and he looks so, sort of similar to the Morgan's Beauty, but actually different. Um, and again, similar but different from the Or Census. Same colour, but actually a different growth habit. So I'm quite excited to have different ones. And then on a very, very similar sort of theme, we've got Crassula Tecta lizard skin here so this one has some very very cool texture I don't know if that will focus maybe it won't but it's got a very lovely texture and does look a lot like lizard skin so that's very cool same color well similar color different 
um, growth habit. Now, this um, Crassula tector made me think a lot of the andromiscus um, that you see a lot around, which actually are part of the Crassulaceae family. Um, and I did get an andromiscus. Uh, this is Shultianus. Shul um, and you can see, I'd never actually realised that um, Andromiscus are part of the Crassula family, um, but they are, um, and it makes sense because they look kind of similar, um, but I just think that one's really pretty. The light's not quite doing the colour justice actually at the moment, but um, it has a really nice pink flush around the edges, so excited for that one to grow up too. Uh, where are we? So I think that's my Crassula. Um, next one I thought was really cool. So this is Tylacodon buccolzianus, um, which just looks like a dead tree. I just think that's so cool. I just, I love it. Um, so that one's very, very funky. Um, can't wait for that one to grow up and see what that looks like. The only thing that I'm slightly worried about is that it's going to be quite difficult to figure out when this is alive or if it's died so that'll be fun um then i got uh, a little replacement turbinocarpus macrochile or macrochile i'm not really sure how you say it um but i had this plant before this is one that died in the greenhouse uh, it's got a really pretty little white flower so i'm excited to see that one again um because i was really gutted about losing that one um to be honest and what else i also got another turbinocarpus and this is swobode swobode um and that one's really cute as well i've not come across this one before but I'm quite excited by it and then i got a an aloe snowflake um because these were all going for like these were kind of one pound two pound three pound they were not expensive plants and this is just so much better than what you get in the garden center and even on ebay so i was just so chuffed to be able to have an opportunity to get all of these um i know i realize this is seeming a bit crazy and we're not even really all the way through yet we're over halfway um i also got a tephra cactus uh, which is another type of cactus that I am obsessed with. I love the tephra cactus and I lost a good few um, in the greenhouse, which I was really gutted about. And I haven't managed to like for like replace them, but I have got some slightly different tephra cactus um, plants, which I'm quite excited about. Um, and then, very similar but not the same, I got a tephra cactus alexanderi. Um, so it is different, looks very similar, but that's because they're the same family. Um, but yeah, very excited to have two more tephra cactus. Uh, what else, what else, have I missed any? I think, I think we've done good. So the next one that I got is a replacement for a little one um, that died, which I was so sad about. And actually I have to say, this is not doing so well. Um, so this I got bare rooted, but it's actually gone kind of squishy. So I'm worried that that might not be surviving very well. Yeah, I think it, oh crap, I think this one might have rotted. I don't know how though, because I literally just potted it up after I got it. Yep, yep, that is definitely rotten. Man, that is a real shame. Um, because this one was probably my most expensive purchase. This was £22.50. Hmm, might have to do a bit of propagation and just see what happens with that, but that's that's a bit gutting, I have to say. Um, I don't know why that would have rotted. That's really weird. Um, so <laughs> let's just breeze past that one. It's really odd. Um, this little one, though, I got from the same stall, um, and he's really cute. So this is a variegated astrophytum. Um, so can you see on here, we've got that lovely very pink orange variegation, which is just incredible. I've never seen it before. So this is Astrophytum asterius. Um, and this is from Ian's, Ian's Cacti and Succulents, I think it is. Um, and this, this one was £17.50. It was not a cheap, um, little cactus, but I'm really, really chuffed with it. Um, so that one's very lovely. 
And the other one that I got from that stall was uh, Aloe Erinacea, um, which is actually one that I had a long time ago, but it died. Um, so I was actually just quite pleased to get this one. I think it was like four or five pounds or something. So that was very pleasing. Uh, very happy to get that one back. Um, next, there's only two more stalls, I promise. We will get through this. I know this has got really, <laughs> got really long. Uh, the next stall um, was from the Southampton branch of uh, the British Cactus and Succulent Society. So first one I got was this Sedum Cyboldii, um, which is really pretty. You can get the non-variegated version of this um, quite easily in the garden centre. Um, but finding a variegated version is very, very difficult. So um, I was really pleased with that. I'm probably going to propagate some of it and see how it does in the garden. Um, but we're going to have to just see how that goes. Um, I'm not going to put the full plant out in the garden because um, you just never know what might happen. Wind. My goodness, the wind is crazy. And I got a little Sulco Rebuccia. Uh, this one is Rauschei, Rauschei um, which I had a long time ago. This one died on me, so I am very pleased to get it back. This one is a gorgeous one to look at up close, but I don't know if it'll let you have a proper look, but just a very, very pretty, pretty cactus. Um, and what else did I get from that stall? I got another Tephra cactus which I was very chuffed by. Never had this one before. This one's new. Um, this is the Tephracactus molinensis. Um, and he's just really pretty. I really like that one. Um, so that one's awesome. I also got a Gymnocalisium uh, nat, nat, natalii, natalii, I think. Uh, natalii, yeah. And that one is gonna bloom at some point. So I'm really pleased about that. Um, I did have a Gymnocalisium that also died in the greenhouse. I don't remember which one it was though. So I got a couple just, you know, just to cover the bases. <laughs> um, and I got a, a Pachyphytum oviferum. So this one's very cute. And again, it's one of those ones where in the garden center, you'll have loads of fingerprints all over it and all that lovely protective powder will be gone from the poor plants. So I'm just very pleased sorry this is me holding them slightly sideways all the cactus dressing is coming out very pleased to have this one again these were all like one or two pounds three pounds at most um so they were very lovely to get now um oh i did get uh, a gymnocalisium raganaceae which is really really pretty so this one's in flower got two flowers and I just love that it's kind of like this greeny brown color which is really funky I've not kind of come across that one before um, it's got another couple of flower buds coming as well so that one's really pretty there we go and we've got a Graptopetalum pentonerum pentonerum I think it is um, which is just a really cute little purple Graptopetalum, um, really pretty little succulent. So that will be going out in the garden during the summer. And what else? I got this Echeveria agavoides, uh, which is a really pretty one. Not to be confused with my Echeveria colorata, which are slightly different. They are different, I swear. Um, <laughs> um, but they're both very pretty. But um, just I couldn't resist this coloration I just thought it was really really gorgeous and have I got everything from that stall my legs are going to sleep again oh dear um yeah this wasn't the best wisest decision but my legs are going to sleep like crazy um oh and I think I forgot one actually um two maybe yes uh, so I got a Lophophora Lophophora, I never really know how to say it. Um, it's the peyote cactus. Uh, so this is the Lophophora williamsii. So this is one I lost in the, um, oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to hoover up after this. Um, this is one I lost in the greenhouse. So I was really pleased to get that one back. Not because I want to eat it or get high or anything like that. I just like having them in my collection. They have very pretty flowers. Uh, and I also got a Gymnocalisium Shikendansii delaeti, which is a 
new one to me but I just again really really liked this coloration and like the shape of it I just thought it was really pretty um, so that's that one and then so I thought I thought that I was all done with buying cacti um, oh no I missed another one hang on one last one this is another one that is um, a replacement so this is uh, a noto cactus um, and often mistaken for the golden barrel cactus just because of the, the size and shape of it but this has a lovely um, yellow flower really really pretty this is one of my oldest cacti that I had that died in the um, in the greenhouse really sad but now I've got a beautiful new one to replace him so that is good uh, right I, can, I feel like I'm speeding up because my legs keep going to sleep <laughs> okay so now is when I thought that I was done with <laughs> the cactus sales and I was feeling a bit like oh my goodness I've spent quite a lot of money um, but I was you know I was feeling really chuffed really pleased with um, my haul and then in the back of the show hall, which is another whole story, that the, sh the cacti and show was incredible. Um, but the at the back of the show hall, there was another sale table. And these ones were really funky. And I love my funky cacti and succulents. And I just could not walk away. I found it really hard. And I have to say, they <laughs> these the people were lovely, but they did really <laughs> tempt me to buy more than I was planning to buy <laughs> in a good way. And I'm really like really pleased that they did. But um, I was just thinking, I feel like such a mug here <laughs> because <laughs> it's very easy for them to sell to me. Oh, keep getting freaking cactus spines in my tights, in my legs, everything. Um, my goodness, I've got a huge load of spines in my tights. Oh dear. I don't even know how I did that. I don't know how I did that. Right, so um, when I went to this stall, I was... I. There were so many amazing cacti and succulents, I didn't know where to begin. Um, but there were a few that I hadn't ever seen or been able to purchase in person before. So I was really excited by that. Um, and those are, um, and these are the ones that I recognized, you know, cause the rest of them I, I haven't ever seen before. So this is an Astrophytum ubi, um, which is really cute, really cool. I've never seen one like this for sale. Um, I've seen a lot of them on like the American um, cacti and succulent Instagrams, um, but I've just never, flip's sake, never seen them, <laughs> never seen them in the UK. Um, so I had to get this one and it's got a lovely flower bud coming and just, I don't know, looks really cool. Um, and I also got Astrophytum Miracle, which is this little fella. He was really cute. Um, so that was really exciting. Um, to get those and they were again really cheap I think these were like three pounds each or something like that um, so and bearing in mind I've never seen them in the UK before I was just like I've got to get them and same for this fella so this one is Astrophytum Asterius V type so similar family and possibly even species to that variegated one um, that I've got because this is an Asterius um, but this one, look at him, isn't he cool? I just, I can't even, I just, I don't, I've never even seen one like this. So he's very cool. I was really pleased to get him. And again, he wasn't expensive. Um, so I'm going to put the name of the, um, the lady who sold these ones because, um, I think she's called Agave Addict on Instagram, but, um, they were really, really lovely people, really enjoyed having a chat with them and, um, I just I love all their plants they look amazing so uh, make sure to check them out and now these are the ones that she talked me into because they're so funky and cool <laughs> um, so this one that I've never seen before in my life is a Seraria Pygmaea, Pygmaea. Um, so this one is beautiful I just something about it really took me because it's um it's got these lovely little heart-shaped leaves if you can see 
I don't know if you can see very well um, and it's got this lovely woody stem and it's just everything about this is such a like a me plant I love this little thing um, so cute um, so excited to see what it grows into um, and just yeah really love this one this one was a little bit more expensive I think it might have been 17 pounds or something like that I can't even remember but um, I don't know I was kind of past caring at this point I just got too excited <laughs> um, and then similarly uh, this one was, is so weird so this is a Puna claveroi claveroides um, and this is known as the Tom Thumb cactus because it's got these weird little like it's almost like a like a thumb like that um, and it's such a strange little cactus and I just couldn't resist could not resist but I don't even know what to think about it like I don't know if I like it or whether I hate it or I don't it's such a weird one <laughs> and this one was really cool I think it was like seven pounds something like that I could be making these prices up I know basically that they didn't come to a, a great amount um, altogether so um, and I also got a Puna Bonii which is really cute now look at this one just a little so cute with those tiny little um cactus bits hold on too small to even see there we go it's so sweet i love it um so that's a really cute one and i think we're down to my final plant you must be breathing a sigh of relief um now this one when i got him same for stall um he'd kind of like fallen out of his pot um which is he's also doing now um, so I repotted him and he's struggling a bit to stand up but um, I just really like this one he makes me think of like a potato or something um, I don't know what he is he wasn't labeled uh, but I just he looks a bit like a tephra cactus of some description to me um, but I just really really like him I think he's very very cool uh, you might be able to see why I think of him as like a potato cactus um, but yeah really really love him really cool um, and again, not very expensive. I think this one was maybe three or four pounds or something like that. I just, I don't know, it blows my mind. Like, how are these so inexpensive? Um, so that is my crazy, crazy haul of cacti and succulents. I have to say, this this one I'm a little bit gutted about because this was like my pride and, pride and glory of the whole thing um, because it was cheap. Uh, but now I maybe think it was too cheap, yeah, because it's got like a little bit of... This is this is the whole thing, okay? And now it's got like a bit of juice dribbling out of the bottom, so I think it must be rotted, which is a real shame, but um, never mind. All things considered, all of the rest of them have done so incredibly well that I don't even mind, even though that was one of the most expensive ones. It's okay, it's fine. Um, so I will still be out on the lookout for a Myrtilla cactus geometrizans fukurush something. Um, <laughs> but that's okay, it's fine. Well, you know, this is the, the downside of the plant hobby is sometimes they do not make it through. Um, but yeah, I'm just really, really pleased. I'm surrounded by cacti and succulents. I'm so excited. I just i'm so in love with all of them i think they're all fantastic um and i suppose this is a bit of like it's almost like a little bit of a sales pitch i am a member of the british cactus and succulent society um i get a magazine every quarter um from them which is really cool even if you just look at the pictures because you don't understand what they're talking about maybe like i do i might do that i don't know <laughs> um but also the shows that they do are just spectacular and it's always nice to support somebody's hobby and independent growers that kind of thing and also the really good part of it is you so very rarely get pest ridden plants from these places because these people are so passionate about their plants the last thing they want to do is go and give pet pests to other people whereas in the garden centers you're always coming home with mealybug and spider mite and thrips and god knows what so um yeah highly highly recommend and um i really look forward to showing you how these all do um in the coming sort of weeks and months so um yeah uh, to those of you who have made it through this entire insane haul um 
Thank you. And I'd love to know which ones are your favourites. Obviously not the rotten Myrtilla cactus. Sad. Um, but other than that, uh, yeah, I'd love, I'd love to hear what you think. And if you think I'm mental, please leave me a comment. <laughs> I am very aware that this is a not a normal haul. And if I hadn't have had that disaster with my collection, I don't think I would have bought half of the ones that I've bought this time. Um, because it would be a bit unreasonable um, if you've already got a large collection to buy quite this many. Um, but I kind of let myself off the hook because I had a lot of space now to look after these and it is one of my biggest hobbies I think although I don't show them very much on here um, cacti and succulents have long been like a huge love for me I guess it's because they don't grow very much and you don't see much like difference and updates whereas you know with the tropical plants you see new leaves all the time all that kind of stuff so um, but yes lo I'd love to know what you think um, even if it's negative <laughs> Uh, I promise you I'm not rolling in cash and this has had a bit of an effect on my financial status uh, but I don't mind it's okay um, I'm just so chuffed to have more cacti and succulents to care for and I wouldn't recommend buying this much all in one go unless you've had a huge disaster like I have so um, yes I look forward to your comments and I hopefully will do some more videos in the near future. I uh, hope you're all doing well and thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.